I'm Barbara from Holly Hill. When I was 20 years old, I aborted my first child. I did that in Orlando, Florida, May 23rd, 1978. Today I stand for Kylie Ann. I remember that I was in an abusive relationship, unmarried. I, my boyfriend wanted me to have an abortion. My sister and mom knew of the bad relationship, so they encouraged that. I remember I was very sad and tears streamed down my face. Three years later, I was living in Dallas and I was completing a medical assisting program. I needed to do an internship at a medical facility in order to graduate as a certified medical assistant. Our teacher read a list of openings in the area and she mentioned an abortion facility, the Dallas Women's Center. I thought since I had had an abortion, maybe I can help young girls that are, find themselves pregnant and abandoned like I was. My duties included counseling. I told the girls, your cervix will be dilated, then the doctor will insert a plastic tube into your uterus that is attached to a suction machine. That will, is going to remove the contents of your uterus. <clears throat> it is quick and simple, and you can go back to work in a couple of days. You can follow up with your own GYN, or you can come back here and get birth control pills. I would have them sign a consent form, and that was about it. After a while, my duties broadened, and a couple of times I had to assist in early abortions. Mainly, I held the girls' hands and said, it will be over soon, and then I would help them to the recovery room. Sometimes I had to clean up after the procedures. I won't share at this time the horrors that I've seen, but it was evident, and to my memory today, I still smell and hear and see all the sights of life that was destroyed. Around that time, I had a sister that was pregnant back here in Florida, and I bought a book for her called A Child is Born. Before mailing it, I looked at all the pictures and read the development of the baby, and I realized I had to change the way that I was trained, trained in counseling the girls. So I brought the book to work and showed it to Carol Everett, who was at that time my office manager. And I said, can I show this during counseling? She said, absolutely not. This is in her book, which is um, titled The Scarlet Lady, and it was uh, released in 1991, and she wrote about me on page 146. I felt very sick because I was working at this abortion facility that was deceitfully helping women murder their babies, and they were raking in the money doing so. As a woman who chose to abort my first child, and one who worked in a place that aborted countless babies, I have had much guilt and shame. I have seen with my own eyes many things that my soul will never forget. It is horrifying to me to know that this is done, and it's done so easily. I believe having a law to require an ultrasound be done prior to an abortion would no doubt put a stop to this type of deceit. It would also be a window into the uterus to show what the contents of the uterus really is. It would also help with ectopic pregnancies, retroverted uteruses, and any other unforeseen problems that could be life-threatening to the mother. It would give more information to the woman so she can make a fully informed decision. It is safer for the woman and the doctor. Ultrasounds are necessary, and they make sense. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm Jeanette from Orlando, Florida. <coughs> In loving memory of my son, Joshua Michael, whose destiny was destroyed in 1982. Michael, I miss you very much. I am so, so sorry for what I did. I pray that you can forgive me. I struggle every day to forgive myself. I love you. Mommy. My name is Spring. I'm from Orlando. In loving memory of my sweet little angel, Amaria Grace, 2005. Mommy loves you and misses you so very much. I'm so very sorry for cutting your destiny short, but I'm so happy you are in heaven with Jesus. I am sure you are as beautiful as the angels. I can't wait until I get to meet you, but until then, I will use your story to help other women choose life. Love always, Mommy. We are all 
women that have traveled from all over the state at our own expense. We gain nothing from coming here except honor for sharing our stories, our truth, so hopefully that other women won't be lied to and deceived like we were and later traumatized when we learn the truth of first trimester fetal development. It is not just a clump of cells or a blob of tissue. We wish we would have had to pay for an ultrasound and been able to view it. We wish we would have even had that opportunity to be told the truth, but we weren't. I would like to read a quote by Kathy Roos that I read a few days back. Quote, the information an ultrasound provides ought to be in the hands of the woman who is making the abortion decision, not only in the hands of the person who stands to profit from it. I would like to thank all of the ladies for their courage today to stand and to share about how their choice of abortion hurt them and their families. Even the ones that do not speak are here standing for their truth and their children lost to abortion. And it does take courage. It's not an easy thing just to even stand. I hope that by listening this morning, those of you representing the media have seen a new side to the discussion and realized that abortion is more than just a choice. It is the taking of a life, an irreplaceable choice that we now have to live with for the rest of our lives. Our desire is that the governor, Chris, will read the 346 declarations from four Florida women that you see standing here being held. And also, we have created an album of the baby shoes, open it up, um, in loving memory shoes for the governor to actually see and read some of the personal messages on there from the women and families hurt by abortion. And we plead with Governor Chris to protect women from making an uninformed choice and to the right thing by Florida women and please allow House Bill 1143 to become law. And I would also like to thank you in advance for sharing our story truthfully. If there's anyone, we will go ahead and take questions now. <coughs> and also just to let you know, we have media packets, the white packets there on the table, has copies of many of the women's um, one-page testimonies, our opening closing statements, and the, the media announcement. I'm not sure, I didn't hear everyone's story, but is anyone in, in this group, would they be affected by the legislation? Because many of you had abortions years ago, and a lot of things you're asking for are required in law, second and third trimester ultrasound, and descriptions of the fetus, etc., are required in law. Why is this extra step needed? Well, all of us, um, and there probably are some that still have an ability to become pregnant, but even, f I would say, even as myself, as a woman, it would affect my grandchildren, my son's girlfriends, whether they choose life or not, if they ever have themselves in that situation. So I think it still affects, that's why we want to get the message out, that abortion affects our communities, our families, the future generations. Rebecca, can I say something? Wait. Um, it would affect me as a woman who's had an abortion and lost children because of abortion. It, it, it was emotionally traumatic, and it would be emotionally traumatic for me for my tax dollars to go and pay for abortions. And I don't believe that that should be imposed um, on um, anyone else, you know, for us to, to pay for um, others. 